Lesson 4.10, place the quotient's first digit in long division. Long division is a method used to do multi-digit division. And the steps are done vertically, paying close attention to place values. We can use place value to know where to place the first digit of the quotient. We look at the first digit in the dividend. If it's large enough to be divided by the divisor, we write the first digit above that place. 5 fits into 7 one time. We put the 1 above the 7. If the first digit of the dividend is not large enough to be divided by the divisor, we include the second digit of the dividend. 3 will not fit into the 1. So we look at this as the first two digits as a 12. The 1 isn't large enough, so we use a 12. We think, well, 3 fits into 12 four times. And because we're using both digits, the 4, our partial quotient, will go above this second digit. We write the partial quotient above the dividend's second digit when we're using the first two digits. So what's really happening when we do long division? We look at 75 divided by 5, and we think, how many times will this 5 fit into 7 tens? And we think, well, 10 times 5 is equal to 50. We subtract the 50 from the 75. And we put that 110 in the tens place up here, because we did 10 times 5. We do our subtraction and get 25. It's two tens and five ones. And they're regrouped as 25 ones, so the partial quotient can be written above the ones place. 5 goes into 25 ones five times. We subtract that 25, the 5 times 5, we get a 0. Is there a way to go faster? Yeah, there is. We have 75 divided by 5. We just think how many times can 5 fit into 7? We don't necessarily look at it as 7 tens or a 75. We just think can 5 fit into 7 and how many times? It fits in one time, so we put a 1 above the 7. We do 5 times 1, which is 5. We subtract and get a 2, and now we just drop the 5 down. After dropping the 5 down, we think, how many times can 5 fit into this 25? We think, well, 5 times 5 is 25, so we put a 5 above the 1's place. We do 5 times 5 is 25. We do our subtraction, we get 0. We have 0 left, so there's no remainder. But sometimes the first digit of the digit dividend isn't large enough for the divisor to fit into it, so we include the dividend's second digit. Can 5 fit into 2? No. Can 5 fit into a 23? Yes. 5 times 4 is 20. We do the 5 times 4. We write our 20 here, do our subtraction. We get a 3. Now it's the 5's turn to drop down. Now that the 5 dropped down, we ask ourselves how many times can this 5 fit into this 35? And we know that 5 times 7 is 35, so it'll fit in 7 times. We write a 7 up there, and we do our 5 times 7, which is 35. We subtract it and get a 0. We know the quotient is 47. A library has 184 new books. The librarian wants to put the new books on eight shelves. How many books will be on each shelf? So we need to find 184 divided by 8. We write our problem, 184 divided by 8. We ask ourselves, how many times can 8 fit into this 1? It can't. So then we ask ourselves, how many times can the 8 fit into an 18? Well, we know that 8 times 2 is 16, so we do 8 times 2. We write the 16 here. We subtract and get a 2, and now it's the 4's turn to come down. We bring the 4 down, and we ask ourselves, how many times can this 8 fit into this 24? We think 8 times 3 is 24. We write the 8 times 3 is 24 down here. We do our subtraction and get a 0. 
we know that the, she can put, or he, can put 23 books on each shelf. So let's try another one. We have 464 divided by 3. We ask ourselves, can the 3 fit into the first digit 4? Yes, this time it can. It fits in one time because 3 times 1 is 3. We do our multiplication. We write our 3 and subtract and get a 1. And now it's the 6's turn to come down. We bring down the 6 and ask ourselves, how many times can 3 fit into 16? Well, 3 times 5 is 15. So we write a 5 above the 6 because that's the one that came down. That's the place value we're at. We do 16 minus 15 and we get a 1. And now it's the 4's turn to come down. Now we ask ourselves, how many times can the 3 fit into 14? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. We do 3 times 4 is 12 and write it here. And we subtract, we get a 2. Our quotient is 154, remainder 2. Every time we find how many times the 3 will fit into that amount, we write our partial quotient above here, above the dividend. And we do the multiplication and subtract it. We can use estimation to place the first digit for the quotient. Here we have 531 divided by 3. We round 531, it rounds to 500. The 3 tells the 5 to stay the same, and the 3 and the 1 become zeros, don't they? So it rounds to 500. We think, how many times can we fit 3 into 500? And we think, well, 100 times 3 is 300, so that's 100 times. So we put a 1 above the hundreds place for 100 times 3. And 100 times 3 is 300. We do our subtraction and get 231. Now, how many times can 3 fit into 231? And we think, well, 3 times 7 is 21. And if we put a 0 on that 7 and make it a 70, we'll be able to put a 0 on the 21 and make it a 210. So, we do 3 times 70. We put the 7 in the tens place for the 7 tens for the 70. We subtract 210 and we get 21. Now we ask ourselves how many times the 3 will fit into the 21. And 7 times 3 is equal to 21, so we can put a 7 in the ones place. And 3 times 7 is 21. We write that product here. We subtract and get a 0. And our partial quotients were 170 and 7 which equals 177. But if the dividend rounds to the next greater 100, it's better to use place value to divide. Let me show you. So when we did this one, the 531 rounded down to 500. If the dividend rounds up to the next greater 100, estimation may not work. Here we have 581 divided by 3. This 581 is going to round to 600. And when we ask ourselves how many times 3 can fit into 600, we think, well, 200 times 3 is 600. So we estimate a 2 and write it up here. But then when we do 200 times 3, we get 600. And now this subtrahend 600 is too large to subtract from the dividend. So be careful when using estimation if the partial quotient is too big. My personal choice is to always use place value to divide. But sometimes, on a test or homework, we might need to use estimation. Now here we have 741 divided by 3. And when the problem was being done, the person thought 3 goes into 7 only one time. So they did 3 times 1, which is 3, and they subtracted and got a 4. But this 4 is too big. If our subtraction produces a difference greater than the divisor, 4 is greater than 3, the divisor could have fit into the dividends digits more times. 
3 fits into 7 2 times. 3 times 2 is 6. We get 1 for our difference. Yes, that's better. Now we can continue on doing the problem. Make sure you fit the divisor into the digit enough times so that when you do your subtraction, your difference is not bigger than the divisor. That means you could have put the 3 into the 7 more times. Let's try another one, placing the first digit of the quotient. Here we have 472 divided by 6. We ask ourselves, can 6 fit into 4? No, 6 can't fit into 4. So, how many times can 6 fit into 47? We use both of these digits in the dividend. Well, I know 6 times 7 is 42. 6 times 8 is 48. That's too big. So we'll use 6 times 7. We write the 42 here and do our subtraction. We get a 5, and now it's the 2's turn to come down. And we think, how many times can 6 fit into 52? And 6 times 8 is 48. That's pretty good. 6 times 9 is 54, so that's too big. That's bigger than 52. So we use the 8. 6 times 8 is 48. We subtract the 48 and get a 4. We have 78 remainder 4. So if the divisor can't fit into the first digit, we try fitting it into the first two digits. So we'd be fitting 6 into a 47 instead of just a 4. Now this one may seem a little tricky. We have 419 divided by 4. We ask ourselves how many times can 4 fit into 4? Well, one time. So we write a 1 above there for our partial quotient. We do 4 times 1 is 4. We subtract, we get a 0. And now it's this 1's turn to come down. And we ask ourselves how many times can 4 fit into 1? It can't. It fits in 0 times. So we put a 0 up here and do 4 times 0 is 0. We subtract again and bring our 1 down, and now it's the 9's turn to come down. We ask ourselves how many times can 4 fit into 19? Ah, 4 times 4 is 16. We subtract that 16 and get a 3. We have 104 remainder 3. So if, when you subtract and get a difference, your divisor will not fit into it, it'll fit in 0 times, then that's the partial quotient. It's a 0. And we write it above the dividend in the correct place value and drop the next number down. The more a divisor increases, the more the quotient decreases because we're putting fewer into more groups. Here we have 24 divided by 2, 24 divided by 3, 24 divided by 4. So the divisor is increasing. It's going 2, 3, 4. It's going up. But our quotient is going to decrease. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 24 divided by 4 is 6. These are decreasing as these are increasing. Well, what happens is when we have 24 divided by 2, we need to put 24 into two groups. So we have 12 in each group. When we do 24 divided by 3, we now have 24 that are spread into three groups we only have 8 in each group. When we do 24 divided by 4, now we have 6 in 4 groups. So the groups increased, that's the divisor, and the number in each group decreased. That was the quotient. In our next lesson, 4.11, we're going to divide by one-digit numbers using long division, and we're going to see how we can check our answers with multiplication. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye.